In the news tonight, decision on lockdown extension expected tonight. Lambasa Hospital cordoned off and breaches delay food ration distribution. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Fiji. The Permanent Secretary for Health, Dr. James Fong, will be delivering a COVID-19 briefing later this evening and we will bring you live coverage of that media conference as soon as it begins. We expect uh, Dr. Fong to make some announcements with regards to the lockdown of the Suvanasori area as well as other parts of Viti Levu. We also expect an update on the food ration distribution. We'll bring that live, but for now we continue with our bulletin. Certain parts of Lambasa Hospital were curtained off this morning. FPC News understands the areas concerned are the same ones which were cordoned off last year when there were positive cases of COVID-19 in Lambasa. We also understand that police have set up checkpoints at the entrance of the hospital today. We have sent questions to the Ministry of Health. FPC News can also confirm that at least one family was advised to self-isolate as a precautionary measure. Earlier, the Health Permanent Secretary, Dr. James Fong, had said they will only make announcements when they have all the correct information. Ration distribution has proven difficult in some communities as people have strayed out of their homes to collect food packs. In worrying scenes, teams at the Langi Langi settlement in Suva this morning were surrounded by dozens of people who breached the lockdown and COVID restrictions, leaving their houses. Kelly Vadala reports police had to be called in to break up the queues. These distribution teams were caught off guard by people rushing out of their homes, a blatant disregard of the lockdown. Well, we have informed our team leaders that uh, nobody should be queuing up. So in the case they are queuing up, we will let them know that it shouldn't be happening. And our teams will be delivering food uh, on a door to door uh, basis. At around 10 a.m., people were lining up along the streets to receive their food rations. More resources were later mobilized to this area to ensure strict measures were followed. When questioned why they came out of their homes, some said they were desperate to get food. We just saw the trucks and people were rushing out of their homes to get their ration. That's why we lined up. We are thankful for the ration. I had to go join the line and police started telling us to stand two meters apart. This sort of reaction from the public is also causing delays in teams reaching communities where rations are needed. Gandur adds they have distributed close to 6,000 ration packs and 27,000 requests have been made through the Star 161 hash helpline. We're looking at currently around 10 to 11,000 actual requests. But because what is happening, there are more than uh, one request still coming in from the same family. Analyzing data received on the helpline continues to be a major challenge. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The Ministry of Health is formulating a strategic vaccination rollout plan for Viti Levu. This is being done as there is a need to take extreme caution against the rapidly spreading COVID-19 virus. The ministry will make necessary announcements once it is safe to do so. Ministry says that people can continue to register online for the COVID-19 vaccine. At this stage, the uh, priority is to vaccinate the high-risk population, which include frontline workers, persons with disabilities, people over 60 years of age, and those with comorbidity issues. The ministry has reassured Fijians that all eligible individuals will be vaccinated in due course. Fiji will continue to receive the COVID-19 vaccine in batches similar to other countries. And in a move that could affect Fijians seeking seasonal work in New Zealand, the Kiwi government is planning a shake-up of its immigration laws. It proposes curbing reliance on temporary migrant workers. Up ahead, high numbers of curfew arrests. And exploring online shopping. Welcome back. The Suva Magistrates Court has imposed heavy fines on a manager and an employee of Exotic Fiji Limited. Harish, Kevin Kumar and Chosua Ndolo were guilty of operating a non-essential business in the Central Division on Friday. The two had failed to comply with orders. Kumar has been ordered to pay $2,000 in fines 
while Joshua was imposed a fine of $1,000, both to be paid within three months. The two have been told that failure to pay within the given time will lead to them serving 100 days imprisonment. The Fiji police force has not let up in its enforcement of the curfew and lockdown in the Suvanosori corridor. Acting Commissioner of Police Rusiate Tundrabu says it's been a strenuous few days for policemen and women, but they are not taking lightly any breaches of restrictions. Kritika Kumar reports. A large number of arrests have been made since the extended lockdown kicked in, and would be offenders have been warned. Police officers want to breach. Uh curfew orders and uh, restrictions, uh, COVID restrictions that are in place. They straight away take their leave and then uh, they will be interdicted, uh, waiting for their court uh, cases and uh, also the tribunal uh, uh, that will be done. SCP Tundravu says they have received reports about laxity on the part of the police. However, he says the reality behind this is that people are allowing criminal activities to take place on their premises. The force has also mapped out measures to ensure officers are able to cope up with this stressful situation. Uh, we are encouraging uh, our commanders on the ground to map out uh, the rest uh, cycle for our police officers. Uh, we have also taken in our psychologist who is moving around just to talk on the men on the ground. So these are some of the internal uh, mechanisms that are in place. The acting commissioner of police also acknowledged the effort of Fijians who are adhering to health restrictions and the curfew. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. A non-essential business operating in Makoi were among 21 breaches of health protocols and restrictions. Nine people were found loitering in Valilevu Nasinu while a 16-year-old boy was arrested returning from a canteen during curfew hours. Four people were found gathering at the Rewanga PRB flat and two students aged 17 and 18 as well as a 35-year-old woman were all found loitering in the same area. There were 59 people arrested in the last 24 hours for breaching COVID-19 restrictions. Three men were arrested last night in the Western Division for crossing the containment area, while seven were arrested in the Saunaka area for being drunk. A 38-year-old taxi driver was arrested in Wayavi Lotoka for driving without a pass, while a 24-year-old woman was found loitering along the Korotongo area in Singatoka. Online shopping services in Fiji are critical, not only under the current circumstances, but in times of natural disasters as well. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission is leading discussions with businesses, including hardware stores, to explore online shopping options for the convenience of Fijians. Koroi Tandulala reports the ongoing pandemic has shown this is the way forward. While it hasn't happened yet, getting hardware stores online will assist Fijians build back better. Also post disaster, the people that uh, need the services, they don't need to come to the hardware store to place an order. This could all be done through an online platform. So we encourage businesses. Uh, that is a culture that has been uh, inculcated uh, in, in these uh, countries overseas because everybody uh, ensures that they're able to do a, a bit of work themselves. Some businesses are using this opportunity to learn how to expand and improve online services. Supermarkets have also learned that online shopping could be the norm in time to come. I think the challenge now is because we are not only going to the, the big corporates and the, and the big uh, um, uh, hotels and resorts, but we're trying to sort of uh, filter down uh, to the communities and the, um, the residential areas. So uh, with, with COVID, I mean, it's, it's a big challenge. This has bode well for P. Maggi as people are turning towards online shopping for safety reasons. But I think uh, over the COVID, we probably increased by about a, you know, three to four hundred percent uh, in orders. Huh? I think uh, the discussion should be that all Fijian businesses should now explore uh, uh, having a digital presence. The FCCC is working with businesses across Fiji to ease means of doing business. Koroi Tantulala, FBC News. Coming up, marine biologist has no regrets about career choice. Welcome back. Youth groups in the country are playing an active role in the fight against climate change.
project Survival Pacific is one particular group that is taking a lead role in planting mangroves on seashores to cushion the impact of strong waves eating away at our shorelines. The group also engages in cleaning up campaigns along the Suva seawall. Members of the group were part of the 23rd Conference of Parties in Bonn, Germany, sharing Fiji's stories and the impact of climate change on small island countries. The group is made up of secondary and tertiary school students who, are a common, uh, who share a common goal of championing the fight against climate change. A love for the environment has pushed Dr. Sangeeta Mangubhai to become a lead resource person in the field of marine biology. As a top ecologist for 18 years, Dr. Mangubhai says the contribution of women is immeasurable and is urging them to grab every opportunity that comes their way. Jeshulal reports. It hasn't been all smooth sailing for Dr. Mangubhai. The challenges helped her become a successful marine biologist. I sort of just did it because I loved the sea. I, I realized that, you know, having grown up in Fiji with the sea around me, that the sea really felt like it was in my veins and this is really what I wanted to do. And I could suddenly imagine a life in front of me. When she entered marine biology studies in Australia, she was among only a handful of local women interested in the field. The 47-year-old says the passion to protect the environment ignited at a young age when she accompanied her aunts on fishing trips. My aunt, she also would take us out and show us how to fish in freshwater rivers or, you know, uh, how to collect the right things from uh, mudflats, from mangroves. So I got this, uh, I sometimes think that my all those experiences were almost like my first marine biology degree. I didn't have to have an academic degree. The marine biologist is urging youth to take a lead role in protecting the environment. Jeshulal, FBC News. Over 5,000 people from the Pacific, including Fiji, have been able to work in Australia through the Pacific Labour Scheme. The scheme commenced in August last year and there are no indications of a temporary halt despite the second wave of COVID-19. Apunisa Wangairandovo reports. Australian Minister for the Pacific says Australia is not only providing millions of dollars for relief support, but is committed to providing more work under the Pacific Labour Scheme. We have been very, very pleased uh, with um, the quality of the um, uh, workers who have come uh, from Pacific nations, including Fiji, who are working in, in uh, various parts of Australia. And that's obviously very important to our uh, industries, particularly horticulture, but also other industries. Uh, likewise, we know it's important to uh, the economies in uh, the Pacific as well. Seselja also says they value the Vuvale partnership with Fiji, saying this has brought their relationship to the fore during this difficult time. We very much value our Fiji and Vuvale. You know, um, it, it is, I think, a strengthening relationship. It is a, a deep friendship. We're very um, hopeful that we'll be able to work together, uh, not just to help Fiji through this uh, short-term challenge, uh, with COVID, but also I think in the months to really see uh, the relationship strengthened and, and hopefully uh, things like travel uh, between our two countries to be uh, coming back to the fore. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Vurenge Mbainimarama has conveyed his appreciation to Australia, especially in providing the much needed vaccine to put Fiji back on track. The next group of Fijians are expected to leave for Australia in July. Apinisa Ongarandovu, FBC News. Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission has seen a spike in complaints regarding rent increases. FCCC Chief Executive Joel Abraham says they are investigating some cases pertaining to illegal rent hikes. Jeshulal reports. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission says the COVID-related financial hardships of many Fijians requires a mutual understanding between landlords and tenants. 
uh, this does not mean that uh, you uh, that rents will be forgiven uh, it just means that you can work out a payment plan with your tenants uh, to pay over a period of time Many people are without jobs, others are on leave without pay and a number of businesses have been closed due to lockdowns, affecting their ability to earn an income. Abraham says humanity needs to shine through under these circumstances and eviction can't happen without due process. Arbitrary eviction or pushing people out in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day or on the street or locking them out is not uh, uh, an option. that is in that is not only illegal it is also inhumane the consumer council is also investigating rent increment complaints some who are demanding rent and are threatening to evict for failure of rent payments therefore i am urging landlords to consider these hard times and show solidarity with our fellow fijians and empower them during these trying times The rent freeze has been extended to 31st December to help Fijians during this difficult economic situation. Jeshulal, FBC News. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. The Fiji dollar fell against all major currencies on the market, managing to gain ground only against the New Zealand dollar. Prices were all up on the commodities market. Crude oil rose to just over $66 a barrel. Gold saw an $18 jump to $1,869 per ounce, and silver finished at $28.23 per ounce. The Fiji National University has launched two online training programs to support students taking higher degrees by research. The program provides support to supervisors designed to enhance the skills of candidates. The program includes short course modules that are offered online throughout the year. FNU Vice Chancellor Professor Toby Wilkinson says FNU is committed to research excellence and will continue to build on these strengths. He adds FNU was able to launch the two programs despite the closure of campuses due to the current restrictions. And that's it from Business Tonight. Caroline Itavi joins you next with the latest in sports. Good evening and in sports tonight. Despite the pandemic and the lockdown period Fiji is currently facing, the show must go on for weightlifting Fiji. The association and its lifters are gearing up for the Oceania Online League, which is to take place next month. This will be an online-based competition where athletes are required to send in their videos to be judged by a panel. Weightlifting Fiji coach Henry Elder says they are hoping to field 10 male and 10 female lifters to this online championship? We try as much as possible to fill it in, uh, but that is largely dependent on the athletes' availability. Uh, exams, as you know, most of our athletes are young. Most of them are school students, and quite a few of them are in Form 4, 5, and 6. So, so that, that, uh, that will uh, be largely dependent on their parents uh, allowing them to go training and, you know, the availability. One of the young players that can make his debut for the Flying Fijians against the All Blacks is Vilimoni Mbotitu, the former National Sevens rep who recently re-signed for French-based club Catres, shares his journey so far. With the Fiji Mbati squad for the Rugby League World Cup yet to be named, head coach Joe Rambele is keeping close tabs on the Kaiviti Silk Tales. Rambele has been following the team's progress since round one of the Ron Messi Cup competition, hoping to rope in a few players for the Mbati in October. As Venina Rakotang reports, the national coach already has some players on his radar. Like many athletes, swimmer Taichi Wakasama dreams of making his debut in the Tokyo Olympics. He did not qualify for the 2016 Olympics because he was underage, but now the 21-year-old has kept the fire burning. Wakasama grew up watching his hotel worker father make sacrifices to help him pursue his swimming career. First, like we weren't ever rich. It was only my father who had been working. So has been financially supporting my trips because one trip 
is about five thousand dollars overseas. The double Pacific gold medalist says it is only fitting to give back to his parents by working hard and reaching the Tokyo Olympics. So my father did help me in the financial, also mental support, and also for my time management. Play, my parents have helped me so much in carrying like the household. With only two spots available for the universality sport, Fiji Swimming plans to get these competitors fit and ready for the Games. Uh, AOC, which is the Australian Olympic Committee, uh, working with uh, Team Fiji Fasanok, um, they were able to uh, grant us a uh, funding which Fiji Swimming had submitted in, uh, along with some of the other sports for the Olympics. Uh, and this is to send uh, our athlete to Australia. If the two swimmers do meet final requirements, the final decision will be made by Team Fiji and Fasanok. Team Fiji will be leaving for Tokyo, Japan on the 8th of July. Though coaching is still on the agenda for Fiji football sensation Roy Krishna, the 33-year-old says he still has a long way to go. That's it from Sports Tonight. After the break, would you use a soap made out of snail slime? Find out more in Weird and the Wonderful after the break. Cloudy conditions with brief showers were experienced over the eastern parts of the larger islands today. Mostly cloudy and fine conditions with afternoon or evening thunderstorms prevailed elsewhere. In the west, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. From Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy periods with some brief showers. And in the north, fine apart from possible afternoon showers. At sea, an easterly wind flow prevails over Fiji waters. Easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. The next high tide is at 11.48 tonight with low tide at 5.36 a.m. tomorrow. Sunrise is at 6.29. And the outlook for tomorrow, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands. For Thursday, cloudy periods with few showers over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands. Easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. And recapping our main stories, a decision on a lockdown extension is expected later tonight. Lambasa Hospital cordoned off and breaches delay food ration distribution. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, has the Suva Nosori curfew helped contain COVID-19? Visit our FBC News website to answer. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. Remember, the Permanent Secretary for Health, Dr. James Fong, will be there making a, uh, a statement, live, delivering an update on COVID-19 later this evening. And do stay with us for live coverage of that. That's it from me for tonight. Until tomorrow, stay safe. Mother.